So in today's student interview, we're going to be going over how John Danes and his business partner actually managed to scale their social media marketing agency up to almost $20,000 a month profit by following the principles and agency incubator and quite frankly, putting in the work. Now, this is the first ever student interview. This is something that's been highly requested actually internally as a company. We did a survey in 2018 and then a survey once again in 2019 and the 2019 one actually gave one person who filled out an almost 30 question long survey a fully specced out MacBook Pro. Because for us, the information that we collect from these surveys is just, I mean, it's it's invaluable. And one of the things that the grow your agency community wanted to see is actually more stories, more interviews of successful students and to do it not only in an interesting way, but where it's a real human one-on-one -on -one conversation. I'm just gonna be very blunt and I'm gonna voice exactly what you're thinking right now, which is like, oh great, Iman interviews successful students because it's great marketing for his company. Yes, there's an aspect of that. But what I aim to do in these student interviews is to go deeper. In fact, the first point that I touch on in this first student interview with John Danes is how he actually didn't listen to my advice and still succeeded. And these are the sort of nuances that I want to touch on because although I have thousands of students at greatagency.com, I know pretty much every single one of them through the live Q&A calls, through obviously reading thousands and thousands and thousands of Facebook posts, replies, messages, this, that. So whether you're a member of the Grow Agency community, a student of Agency Incubator, or you know, you've never bought one of our products ever, whether that be the last version of Agency Incubator, which was called Six Figure SMA, or the new update SMA program, which is Agency Incubator. Even if you never bought my product and, and you're sitting across the screen never intending to, I want this to be valuable to you, okay? In these student interviews, I'm gonna be poking, I'm gonna be prodding, I'm gonna be getting down to the real reason why these people are successful, and you guys are gonna find a hell of a lot of value from it. So as I said, we start off this process with a bang. John Danes, very, very incredible conversationalist, very good salesperson, but also knows his flaws, knows the areas in which he's weaker as an agency owner, which I'd say, you know, that self-awareness aspect is one of the most important things you can have as not only an agency owner, but as a business owner. So really you guys are in for a treat. One thing that I do want to say just before we start this interview from a technical perspective is this is the first one. I don't know how I'm going to do these from now on. You know, I'm going to find a way to try to increase the production value of this, that, because at the end of the day, when you're doing a Zoom call, there's only so much you can do. In fact, when you save the Zoom calls, it comes out at like a pretty measly 360p or like 480p, and I think that's the max you can do. So I'm going to start looking at maybe using Skype. I'm going to start looking at some other options just to make sure the production quality is as good as possible and to make sure that the light is also constant because you actually find in this interview, I was like leaning back a bit because Cape Town, it's beautiful. The sunsets are incredible here, but the light started shining in my eyes and it's a bit of a mess. So as I said, excuse any sort of technical issues in this first one, two or three student interviews. We'll iron those issues out. And uh, as I said, I think this is going to be something that's so, so valuable for every single one of you guys watching because we're going to cut the bullshit and uh, really, really get down to the root causes of why these people are successful. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first ever student interview. I am joined here by John Danes. John. Welcome. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Well, um, look, could you just give us a quick two to three minute uh, rundown on how you found my stuff, how you found the yeah. program, and how did you really just find uh, agency life? Yeah, so basically, I, I tried running an agency the wrong way for like a year and a half, just doing social media management. And at the same time, I have a podcast that maybe some of the listeners are familiar with. It's called No Excuse to Show, top 100 podcast, mm -hmm. the whole deal. And, um, you know, I found your stuff, I think through Casey Adams. You, uh, you were interviewed on his show and I was reaching out to you trying to get a podcast together. I don't know if you remember this. We never got it together. Um, it took a, it took was, a long time. <laughs> yeah, it did. And that was before the program, uh, before I even jumped in the program. So basically realized that I need to start running a Facebook ads agency and just get focused on doing that. So I was just starting to learn as much as I can. So about six months ago, jumped in agency incubator and I was like, man, this is the first program that I've been in. And mind you, like spent up to $10,000 on one program. Um, and I was like, this is the first program. It's actually plug and play. It's drag and drop. It's short and to the point. Like, dude, I've been in courses that have 700 lessons. Like, how are you going to go through 700 three minute lessons? It's just a terrible structure. So yeah, I was excited for agency incubator to drop because I was always following your stuff and you were like, dude, this is going to be literally insane. It's going to be so good. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to try it out. Jumped in. And um, yeah, man, just really, I was at a good place with my agency before jumping in uh, a decent place, like doing about five to six a month profit and then jumped in and now we're at, you know, 17, five a month profit. Wow. And uh, yeah, so your stuff was real, real breakthrough for us. Um, and it really got us off the ground. 
Incredible. Well, with these student interviews as like incredible and flattering, it, you know, as it is to hear from, you know, six figure students and, you know, to, to get all these kind words and whatnot. I want just the regular viewer watching this, uh, whether they decide to, you know, ever join the Greer Agency community or not to extract as much value as possible. And I know that particularly with your story, that's not going to be very, very difficult. Um, now, one thing that you do and you've kind of followed the, you know, you've kind of followed my uh, lean results driven approach to T. Yep. You basically followed agency incubator to AT. And you know, that, that totally reflects in terms of your agency's uh, results, the results that you guys get, uh, get for your agency. Um, you know, just the, the sort of recognition you guys have as agency owners of respect. I know that you command as an agency owner. The one thing you haven't followed to T is business partner. And I wanted to touch, uh, I wanted to touch on that and okay. dive into that because there's yep. a lot of people, because here's the thing, when I'm talking to such a big audience, I have to give as much as it sucks, somewhat of blanket statements, but yep. there's always nuances and there's always, there's always uh, caveats. And I feel as though right. you and your business partner are an example of that. So can yep. you just touch on, you know, I'd love you, to. <laughs> yeah. Why, why'd you decide to, to hop into the agency world uh, with a business partner? Okay. So what I'd like to say, first of all, there's a certain willpower that you have, like when you're doing anything successfully. And so like people that are doing it well, just have a, a strong willpower. So my first business partner was my best friend and it completely failed. Um, so like basically all the stories that you tell about business partners, that's what happened to me the first time. And for some reason I was crazy enough to get back into it uh, and try it again. But it was this time with a person that said, I was running my agency by myself. And Adam basically came to me and said, listen, dude, I'll work for free. And I want to just figure out, you know, how I can help and then maybe potentially come on. And so I told Adam, I said, look, man, I'm getting really good at sales and systems and, build, and team building and the whole, the whole nine. I want you to get really, really good at ads. I'm not going to ask you to do anything but run ads. And, you know, Adam and I just kind of formed this dynamic duo where I can get on the phone and close people and he can get on the computer and get results. So basically, that was how I started with my business partner. But I remember the first time I talked to you because um, we were talking about the business partner thing and you were like, you know, quite frankly, two idiots aren't going to start a successful company together. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? It's, that's just how it works. So basically. And, and to give a bit of background on that, uh, his point here is, is that a lot of people, um, it's kind of like, a, I don't know. It's like, remember when you're in school and you got like a project and you can either yeah. do the project with a buddy and, yeah. or you could do it on your own. And you know yeah. that like being with a partner doesn't actually mean you're going to yeah. get a better result. It's just like, the thing is when you've got someone else, you can just kind of like pass off responsibility. You, you feel as though there's some safety of having someone else involved in the process with you. When most of the time, that's just a, yeah, that's just a flawed way of excuse. thinking about it. Yeah, that, that's just an excuse to work less hard. So my point here is I could have a six-figure agency by myself. Adam could have a six-figure agency by himself. We didn't build a six-figure agency because we worked together. We built it because we worked twice as hard. And, you know, that's why like we were able to get results quite fast is because we put our brains together. We put our skills together and, focused in our own areas and became really good at those areas because like what I believe is because I mean if I went on some Facebook ads interview and people were interviewing about Facebook ads I wouldn't be the like nobody would be like dang John is like the paid traffic icon but I have a grasp and understanding of how things work and I would say that I'm good in all areas but there's not many areas that I'm just like the master at uh, and if there would have to be one it, it's sales and that's why I, I you know followed your stuff and like your stuff so much because like, dude, at the end of the day, you're a closer, man. Like, you're a great closer. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what you teach in Agency Incubator. And I put a story about this the other day. Like, so many new agency owners, and I know you probably see this all the time, they're like, at, they're making like, you know, they have one client at like two grand a month, and they think they need a team. You don't need a team. You need more clients. So that's why I kind of followed your stuff so much. It's like, hey, go out and sell, and you'll figure out everything else later. Because 95% of businesses are going to fail because of what? They don't have revenue. So... Mm -hmm. You got to sell, sell, sell. And that's really what I focused on. So you said something very interesting there, which is obviously your business partner, you know, he's the one who knows everything in terms of service delivery, but you have enough knowledge to sound competent and to yep. put your client at ease when you're on a sales call with them. Right. My question to you is how much knowledge do you actually need? Because, you know, I talk about the Expedia business model, the students that come in and I'm telling them, you know, in some instances, it's worth it to learn the ads and then sell. But in a lot of instances, it's actually worth it to find a contractor, use right. their case studies, and then sell with a, a median knowledge of, you know, to the service delivery. So my question to you is how much knowledge you actually need in terms of the service delivery aspect of it. I think you need more than the guy that you're pitching, to be quite honest with you. Like as simple of an answer as that is, like if you can just reassure somebody that you are going to get them results and that you actually know what you're talking about once. Cause like, you know, you'll get a meeting with the client and you'll start saying all this stuff and they'll kind of start grilling you to make sure you know your stuff and that you can answer all their questions. And if you can actually adequately answer those questions, you're totally cool. But you know, the thing is, if you're going to bring in a contractor, you're going to do something like that. 
go through the, you know, go through Eman stuff, learn how to run ads correctly. So you can actually look at your contractor and, and make sure you're looking for the right things and make sure that you can actually judge them on those KPIs and say, okay, you're doing this wrong or you're doing this wrong or you need to fix this. And if you have no knowledge of Facebook ads, you're just going to be in this hamster wheel of keep losing your clients because you're not going to know what to look for. So you know, have a basic competency, but by no means do you have to become an expert. And I fully believe that you don't have to be an expert before you can hit 10, 20 K a month. You just need to know enough to go out and sell the services and figure out everything else later. Mm. John, if there's one thing that separates you from other agency owners, what would it be? I, I take more appointments than most agency owners get in a, in a week I take in a day. So like, and I don't mean, and I don't mean that in like an arrogant way. It's just, you got to get no, on no, calls. But I, I know you and I know that's, that's, that's hard yeah. facts. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of the thing. It's like, it's all about percentages, right? So let's, it's just, it's just a basic rule. Like the more you do, the more you're going to get out of it. So let's say you close 10% of clients that you get on the phone with, would you rather get on the phone with 10 clients and close one or get on the phone with hundred and close 10? So you just got to take appointments. And it's like me and you talked about this because you know, the first time we talked, I was kind of asking you questions and things. And you were like, listen, man, you're going to have to break things. And there's going to be a couple things that you're going to need to figure out for yourself. And it's like, you're going to have to get on sales calls that, that suck. And you're going to have to like sell a lot and think, okay, I didn't do a good job on this, but here's what I can change. You're going to have to listen to your call recordings and stuff like that. So you can't just get started and say, I'm going to have five calls a week and then just figure, oh, all these calls are going to go great. And I'll figure it out from there. You need to, for me, at least you need to do a lot. And from there, critique your performance and then build out systems later. Mm -hmm. Now there's a, a concept that's kind of just been lingering in my mind over the past month or so. Uh, basically it's that, you know, your obvious is someone else is amazing. Yeah. And what you're talking about right here is, you know, obviously you relentlessly set meetings, you relentlessly set appointments to yeah. you that has become your norm, your standard. Yeah. But for a lot of people, they're, str you know, they're struggling to get even two meetings, one meeting a week. So how are you, you know, how are you setting so many meetings? Okay. So we have two full-time virtual assistants that, that set for us, what I call setters. They go almost verbatim off the agency incubator script. The cool thing about your approach, people now in 2020 are a lot less hesitant to get off the phone or to get on the phone. So like you, you know, like you say, sell the appointment, don't sell the service. So I think that's the number one problem. Um, the biggest problem is people are trying to sell the service without any context, without, you know, the customer or the client knowing who they are. But when you're just telling people, Hey, I want to get on the phone. I want to give you some free marketing consulting. And then you get on and just go through the pitch and then close them. You're going to get more appointments, number one, and you're going to get more deals. So you got to pitch it from the perspective of this is actually a value to you as a client. And this is not a manipulative thing because like it is a value to the client. It's a massive value to the client. And you have to actually believe that. And another thing is like, Eman, you and I are the same way in this. And this is one thing that I really admire about you. You are so you have like no, nothing could shake you of your belief of what you do at your agency. So like a lot of people be like, I'm, it's annoying if I cold message. It's annoying if you think that you have a crappy service. If you have a rock, like a firm belief that you're going to actually help someone and when you work with them, it's going to bring them value and change their life. You're going to go out and pitch anyone that you can. Uh, in, any, in, in any way that you can. In any way actually, that you can. I'm actually going to pick up my phone right here <laughs> and show you. I, uh, I reached out yeah. to a client earlier today and um, reached out, send, you know, crafted one of my beautiful looms, uh, sent it by email. And then I also use my Instagram as a secondary way to follow up. I don't know if that shows. Yeah. It goes, I told you I'd send you a cat meme in my email to you. Uh, in my email to you. Did you have a chance to check it out? Five hours earlier today, I sent a cat meme. <laughs> that's awesome. See, that's the thing. It's like, you have to have a rock hard belief. And look, if you have no belief, you're not going to close any sales. So I'd say that'd be, that'd be the first thing you need to you need to explore is like, Hey, do I actually believe that what I'm doing is working? Because if you don't like, as I've become more and like more successful and you you're the same way you learn about neuroscience and you learn how your brain works. If you have these thoughts in the back of your head that like, Oh, I'm going to bring this client on. I'm not going to get the results. I'm going to bring this client on and it's going to be stressful in the meeting. You're going to pitch them and you're going to be like, Oh, well, you know, I can help you run some Facebook ads if you really want me to. No, that's not going to close anybody. So just having a firm belief, is the biggest thing. Um, and if you don't have that, you need to really reevaluate, you know, what you're doing. And it's beautiful. Cause I, once again, I, you know, I can just vet for you, um, that your agency gets incredible results. But what I would say is, cause I don't care who you are as an agency owner, you've always had that period in your agency life where it seemed like every single client you had was <laughs> seemed to fire you because you're yeah. getting them crappy results. So when you have no reference, you know, for you, for me or you, it's easy at this point where we have reference points that we can, yeah. you know, logically think of in our mind of, okay, we're an, you know, we're an incredible agency because we've done this for this client, this for that client, et cetera, et cetera. 
my question to you is when, when you weren't at that stage, how did you still maintain that belief that, you know, you could get your clients incredible results? So when you're getting incredible results, you believe that your services are incredible. When you don't, you just have to believe that you're incredible and that you're going to figure it out. So, I mean, like you just have to be a super confident person. That's going to really bleed through on your sales calls. If you just believe like, Hey, I'm going to figure this out. And when I bring on this client, it's my obligation to get them results and I'm going to do whatever it takes. People are really going to see that. So you have to be confident in yourself. And as you grow, you're going to be confident in yourself and you're going to be confident in your agency. And you're going to literally like right now, uh, Eman, you probably remember when you were at the stage that I'm at. Like, I feel like I can run through brick walls right now just because like we're getting results. I'm closing sales. Like it's just, you're, you're confident in your own ability because I'm getting better and I'm confident in my team and my agency. So, you know, at first you just have to believe in yourself because if you don't, who else is going to believe in you? Right. So mm -hmm. believe in yourself when you're first getting started, you're going to build up results and you're going to have clients that fire you. Like that's the thing, man, you can't get discouraged when there's failure. Like you're not going to build anything. I would be worried if I built something super successful with no failure. Like if you look back at people like Ray Dalio, you know, one of the richest men in the world owns the biggest hedge fund ever. He went on the news in, I think it was 2010 and basically uh, was like trying to foresee a financial crisis that never happened. And he was a joke of the industry. So like you're going to have big failure and it's going to stink, but it, you just got to push through it and just keep taking action. Cause like, if I would have been discouraged the first time I lost a client or you would have done it, like we wouldn't even be on this call right now and we wouldn't be helping other agency owners, you know, through this interview. So you just can't get discouraged because it's going to suck sometimes, but you just have to be really thick skinned and you got to have some willpower to push through everything, you know? Mm -hmm. Now there's one thing I want to actually backtrack on, which is you mentioned you have two full-time setters. Do yep. you pay them a base salary plus commission or is it commission only? Uh, so I actually do pay them a base salary, but they're, they're in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of them watch my stuff, so I'm not going to sit here and tell them what I, what I pay them. If yeah. it's cool. But um, yeah, so, but it's not, I would say that you can, you can get one client and, and pay for them. I'll say that. So, you know, it's, it's not something that's super expensive or and when you're first getting started, you have nothing better to do. Like, that's what a lot of agency owners under, don't understand. Like when you have no clients, you have nothing better to do than send videos all day. And I hear so many agency owners that are like, oh, I'm going to send videos and they don't, they don't get open. Well, like doing something is always going to be better than doing nothing, but it's not worth my time anymore to sit and mess, cold message people on Facebook when I can just have two people that do it 80 hours a week. So, you know, it's not a, like do it yourself, get a client and then put it on to somebody else because you're going to be a person like, e man, your time is super valuable and my time's starting to become super valuable and you're going to really focus on high income activities but the setting, the setter stuff, it's not expensive at all. It's not even our biggest expense. Mm, incredible. And out of all the outreach methods you guys have, and I know you guys have tested basically every single thing on earth. Yeah. Um, what's been working for you historically, what's worked for you the best. And, you know, in the past, uh, you, you know, in the recent 30 days, what's worked for you? Yeah. You know, I hate to say this out of all the outreach we do, what's always going to work the best is referrals. Like it, it's just, that's how it's always going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I know that's, that's in any service-based business. Yeah. Any service-based business, but um, cold messaging works really well. Uh, if you have a good, you, have, you just have to have a good script. Like you have to think thousands of people have went through agency incubator. Like Eamon says, don't use the exact same script mm -hmm. in agency incubator. Um, but just basically figure out what your value prop is and get them on a call. Now we're being a little bit more tactical about how we get people on the phone just because we have solid case studies and, and stuff like that. So I'm actually making people fill out like a form before they get on a call with me and actually make sure that it's not a tire kicker and it's not somebody that's going to waste my time. Cause so prior, like, pr prior to recently, would yeah. you, would they set the call either through Calendly Acuity and you wouldn't ask questions like what the current monthly revenue was? Nope. nope. Okay. I just want to get on the phone. Okay. I just wanted to get on the phone because, because an I appointment and it, you just want to get volume because even yes, a dud, sir. because even a dud for you is just extra practice. So you don't 1000%. Care. That's exactly was my mindset. Um, so basically I was like, I'm getting on the phone. I'm getting on the phone. Cause that's my mindset, right? Doing something is always going to be better than doing nothing. Like I'd rather be on the phone with a broke person than not be on the phone at all. So I was basically just trying to get as many appointments as I could. But now like we have credibility because now it's, it's not, Hey, get on the phone with me. I'll give you free marketing consulting. It's get on the phone with me. I can change the way that you do business. Mm -hmm. So now it's a little bit more of a, a, like an opportunity for people more than it is an opportunity for us. And you know, just, that's kind of a paradigm shift. So, but when you're first getting started, I would just say, get on the phone with as many people as you can, because you're going to have call recordings and you're going to be able to figure it out and say, okay, here's what I should have said. And a lot of the times, man, this is contrary to popular belief. If you submit, submit the cement, the belief in people enough, you're going to be able to get some, you're going to be able to, to, to close them. Like you just have to make the pain of not using your service a lot deeper than actually, you know, just going out and not having a business. You know what I mean? Like if that makes any sense. So like you really have to submit your belief into that person that you're on the phone with 
and I've seen people pull, pull triggers. Like we do some 10 week stuff with realtors and it's not cheap at all. So we just work with them for 10 weeks, show them how to run ads. It's kind of a, a different offer of my agency. We still obviously do the, a ton of hands-on services, but we get on the phone with these realtors and it's like, listen, this might be expensive for 10 weeks, but look at the opportunity cost here, you know? So we're going to not only save you money that you could spend on Zillow or spend on all these different websites, but you're going to learn skills for yourself that you can then train your team with. So like they might not have the money then, but they're going to figure out a way to come up with it just because I have put my belief so far into them that they're like, okay, I'm just going to do whatever it takes because I don't want to stay stuck. So, you know, just get on the phone with people. You're going to get on, like, I think a common thing with salespeople and entrepreneurs is like, oh, they're just not qualified, blah, 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 blah. You know, they don't have any money. Well, you know, business owners, and you talk about this too, business owners have credit. Like I, I don't really spend any money out of my personal account. Like I put it, I put everything on credit and just pay it right off, you know? So like I have credit, there might be something that I look at and say, Oh, I can't afford that, but I can throw it on a credit card. It'll work. So like if you submit your belief hard enough into someone, you can make them make a buying decision. So you just have to have belief in your product. Don't use that excuse that, Oh, the leads are unqualified. That's, that's true to some extent, but like everybody's going to get on the phone and be like, if you haven't made your belief firm enough, Oh, I can't afford the service. I'm sorry. Well, like, cause they just don't see the value in it. You know, like when value exceeds price, people buy and that's just the laws of sales. So don't use that as an excuse and say, Oh, well, if I get on the phone with 10 people, they're going to be unqualified. Just get on the phone, tell them what you can offer them and, you know, figure out, don't let them get off the phone is one of the biggest things that email teaches. Like keep them on the phone, figure out why it seems too expensive because listen, like it, I, I've even said this on sales calls before. They're like, Oh, that's too expensive. I was like, well, if I told you that I could give you a Lamborghini for $6,000, would you figure out a way to come up with the money? And everybody's like, yeah, of course it's a Lamborghini. So you just haven't made it valuable enough for somebody to say, Oh my goodness, this is something that I have to do right now. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And Does that make sense? yeah, hundred percent. And it's shocking to me how many people take things at face value and look at a lead and, and it's, this is where understanding, understanding your perspective leads business and the inner workings of their financials is so important because as you mentioned, yeah. people don't understand things like lines of credit. People don't understand things like just the actual operating costs of the business in the niche that they're in. They think that like, they don't realize that your, you know, your average restaurant is, is in the whole 50,000 a month in terms of expenses because like, right. you know, yes, a business right. owner may be making, you know, 5k, 10k, 15k a month profit. But when you look at their expenses, look, they're used to seeing 50, a hundred, 200. Some of these businesses are used to seeing a million come out of their account a month and only left with 10 K a month after that. But look, if they're, you know, if they're used to spending that amount of money in, in terms of operating costs, an extra two or three K a month, yeah. that's an investment, not an expense is not something that really, you know, it's not really agonizing to them. It's just, you haven't right. made, as you said, you haven't made that pain strong enough. Yeah. So I love that there. Now, another question is, obviously you got a lot, a lot of leads coming through the door. What do you do with duds? Do you have any strategic referral partners? Do you keep them in the pipeline? Do you ever reach back out maybe six months later when their financial uh, positions changed? Uh, do you, like yeah. for example, we have an email list. I email my leads three times a week. Uh, once again, just yeah. kind of make staying in front of them. Yeah. So this is one thing we're kind of working on right now just to maximize value from every sales call. Cause what I found is, you know, like not everybody can afford stuff. That's a fact. And, um, there is going to be people that you're going to need to follow up with. And I hate doing it because even I'll say on sales calls, I'll be like, listen, you understand how things go. You understand how, Hey, follow up with me. I would rather like, email. I know you're the same way. I would rather have somebody look at me and say, I don't trust you at all. And I frankly don't even like you more than I'd rather them say, Hey, can you just follow up with me? Because people don't actually on sales calls, man, people will come up with the craziest things to just get off the call because it's uncomfortable. Right. So like, I would just rather have people tell me the truth and say, look, man, I don't trust you. Do, do you I, I don't like you at all. Z Z when, when you can tell that a client, uh, a prospective leader, a prospective client is it, there's hesitation and yeah. it's, it's quite clearly because there's not enough rapport built. Do you ever just, and this is just out of pure curiosity. Do you ever just address them directly and go and, and, and tell them exactly what you just told me? Yeah, it's a, no, hundred percent. Cause people will be like, I gotta, I gotta think about it. And I'll be like, I'm just, I want to, and I always say this on every call. I, I don't, this is hundred thousand dollar advice. I'm always like, let's unpack that. That's what I always say. Let's unpack why you have to think about this because I haven't made you believe in this enough where you have to think about it. Like if it's a good decision, I'm not thinking about it. I'm going, I'm doing it. But you know, there's just so many people that have, I got on a call with this dude the other day who I've been burned before. I've been burned before. I've been burned before. He said it probably 30 times. And I was like, listen, man, I understand you've been burned before. I think you can talk to me for 45 minutes and realize I'm not that kind of guy, number one. And number two, 
don't let one bad experience keep you from making good decisions, right? Like I rode jet skis one time. It was one of the most fun experiences I've ever had. You know how many people have died on jet skis? A ton. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I'm not going to say somebody died on a jet ski, man. I'm never going to ride one because that's going to hold me back from having a good experience. Mm -hmm. So I always, uh, you know, there's a lot of clients that will be like, have these limiting beliefs. And you have to, more than their financial situation, you have to unpack their beliefs and the reason that they make decisions. Because once you can figure that out, you're, it's in your, the ball's in your court now. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like when you understand how someone makes decisions and the reason that they feel the way they do, because like when you're on the phone with somebody and they're saying they don't want to do it, it's probably not your fault. It's some past experience that they've had, somebody that they've heard say they had a bad experience with a marketing agency in the past, some crazy story about how some guy lost his business because of a marketing agency. And all those beliefs are now bleeding through on your call with that person. So you just have to unpack their beliefs and, and you know, just really understand why people are saying the things they are and why that they believe the things that they do. And you're, the ball's going to be in your court and you're going to be able to really help somebody. And like a lot of people hearing that are going to be like, oh, that's unethical. Again, if you believe enough in your product, or your service, that's an actual, you're helping someone. You're just, your goal when you get on a call and uh, it should be, I am going to help this person. I'm going to, first of all, diagnose whether I can help this person or not. We got on a call with the guy the other day and he was telling me all this stuff. And I was like, listen, man, I cannot help you. So I'm going to refer you to somebody who can, I'm sorry. I don't even want to take you on. Um, so your, your goal should be to diagnose if you can help that person. And if you believe that you can, you should do everything that it takes to bring them on as a client. I'll get on the phone with people and I'll say, I have such a firm belief that we can help you that I'm going to feel bad if we get off this call and you're not a client of mine because I know we're going to achieve breakthroughs for you. So you just have to cement, cement that belief in mm -hmm. both you and the client and things are going to go well, but you can't, you can't do that if the belief's not there. You know what I mean? When you said, I'm about to give you guys a hundred thousand dollar piece of advice. I was like, ah, oh, okay, let's, let's see what he comes up with here. But genuinely I can attest to that because the thing is at the end of the day, we're still in the, we're still in the service space business. So you can't be as you can't be as blunt as you would want to. You and I are very, very blunt people, almost slightly abrasive. Yep. And, at the, and at the end of the day, you need to find ways to soften that blow. So saying, let's go ahead and unpack that. That is a yep. non-threatening way to push yep. back on what the client is telling you and really dig down to the, uh, you know, to the actual root cause of their, of their hesitation, of their apprehension. Um, so saying something like, let's unpack that. Or, hey, can I ask you a question about that? you know, um, or Hey, let's talk about that a little more. Any one of those mediums is so, so powerful because once again, you just get, you just get to keep diving deeper and deeper. And at any point where they try to give you some sort of bullshit answer, once again, it's a very unabrasive way to get deeper and deeper and finally get to the root cause or the root thing holding them back. Um, which other day everyone kind of knows anyways, which is, as you said, just report. Either they don't believe in the service, either they don't believe in you, uh, yeah. or a lot of times their reference points in the past, as you said, either their friend got burned by it, either they personally got burned by it, either you know maybe they went on Medium and saw some article about the the downfall of Facebook advertising. It, it could be a hundred one different reasons. Now, I want to respect your time here and you know not let this run uh, too long. Um, yeah. so I'm going to leave you one last final question. If you could give yourself. If you could go back and give yourself uh, advice when you were first starting out with your agency and one piece of advice, uh, and it can't be fill out your calendar, what would it be? And it can, it, it, it can yeah. be in regards to operation, sales, service delivery, or even just mindset, day-to-day -day habits, routines, anything. Yeah. Niche will get you rich, 100%. That's what I tell myself. Because you know when you're first getting started, you... Can I, can I curse on here? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. Okay. You're, you're a whore at the end of the day. When you're first getting started, you're a whore. You'll take anything that you can get, bro. It, it's a fact, man. And, you, and like, okay, they're just like, okay, I'll take this client. But that's going to hurt your ability to scale so much, especially if you're providing a service like Facebook ads. So find out what you like to do. There is going to be a little bit of an experimental time where you're like, okay, maybe I'll try working with gyms. Maybe I'll try working with real estate, see what I can get the best results for. Once you've figured that out, go deep. Go deep and become the guy for that service. I, I just, I feel like if you do that, your ability to scale is going to be much, much more increased. Like you're going to just niche down, figure out what you want to do first. I, I was on the phone with the dude the other day and he was telling me about starting his agency. And I just enjoy connecting with agency owners. And he was telling me about, he's going to be in the pharmaceutical industry. And he's like, yeah, I just heard that you, you should do something that you have knowledge in. And at least I have knowledge in that. Industries that have such a small market like that, you're going to spend more time trying to get the 30 clients that are available when you could spend that time becoming an expert in an, in an industry that has a wide array of clients that are ready to work with you and that need help and actually learning that. And I think a lot of times 
I remember you said this, it's really valuable just to figure out what you like more than what you already know. So, you know, if you're a fitness buff, gyms, great niche. You know, if, if you're a big person that likes self-education and you think that really helps people, info product, you know, like if you know about real estate, I wanted to get my real estate license. So we jumped into that niche and, and we've really crushed it in that niche because I can speak the lingo. So, and I know there's a lot of industries that command huge retainers like roofers and solar. If you sit down with a, a roofer that's doing serious revenue and you can't speak the roofer language, they're going to laugh you out of the meeting. So that's what I would have told myself. Niche will get you rich, you know, figure it out. Don't be a whore and just, just go all in on one niche. All right. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm having to lean back here because it's currently sunset here in Cape Town, but um, okay. there we go. As John said, don't be a whore. That is the key to hitting six figures. And uh, as John and his business partner have successfully done multiple six figures. Actually, are you coming at me from your new office? Yeah. yeah. Are you on a laptop or desktop? I'm on, here, I can sort of show you. I got can a camera you, right here. But can you like do a little twist around? Yeah. Here. You guys may be able to see it. Damn, dude. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of size. Right, what are those, Hue lights? Yeah, yeah. Hue lights. Nice, nice. I love them. Anyways, dude, want to thank you for your time. Um, thank you, brother. Yeah, it's been a incredible to watch your journey, incredible to watch you grow. And um, yeah, once again, really appreciate it. Thank you. Boom.